Welcome to The Walking Dead No Sanctuary. This video will hopefully prepare you for the horrors you'll face in the game. Each scenario is driven by a scenario sheet that contains the setup instructions, the objective track, and other scenario-specific information. To win the game, the survivors will need to accomplish the scenario's specific objectives. However, if a survivor is defeated or the group's morale drops to zero, all players lose. After some consideration, we choose to play as Rick Grimes. Naturally, we will start as the group's leader, so we'll take the leader marker and place it next to our survivor sheet. We will shuffle our survivor deck and draw our starting hand of three cards. Each turn of the game is broken up into five phases. Planning, Survivor, Event, Walker, and Objective. During the planning phase, each survivor draws the top card of his survivor deck. This deck represents the survivor's health, so if you don't have any cards left in your deck when you must draw one, you are immediately defeated and all players lose the game. We have drawn Born Leader, so we add it to our hand. Remember to keep the cards in your hand a secret. Players may discuss strategy, but they may not specifically indicate which cards they have in their hand or which approach the group should take. After each player has drawn a survivor card, the leader draws the top two cards of the event deck, secretly reading both. We drew Wrestling and Clear the Area. Whichever event the leader chooses to put into play is referred to as the active event and determines the group's approach for the turn, which you'll soon find out is a critical aspect of the game. Since this is the first turn, let's go with our gut here and put rustling into play. Neglecting clear the area. When an event is neglected, the leader immediately resolves its discard effect. To end the planning phase, we set the event card rustling onto the group board to denote the group's current approach. Starting with the group's leader and continuing clockwise around the table, each survivor will get a chance to activate during the survivor phase. During an activation, a survivor may perform one action and one maneuver, but they must first play a survivor card to either comply or defy the leader's approach. Compliant survivor cards are survivor cards that match the group's current approach, where defiant cards are survivor cards that do not. Fortunately, Rick's born leader card is compliant, so let's play that this turn. When a survivor card is played, the card's text is not immediately triggered. Only the card's approach is taken into account at this time. Next, we may perform one maneuver and one action, in any order. Available actions and maneuvers are listed on a separate reference card. Additionally, the active survivor may also choose to perform any action or maneuver listed on the survivor card he played this turn. Since there is a walker in the group's area, Rick's instincts kick in and he decides to perform a grapple action. All actions provide an action effect as well as one or more success effects. First, we'll resolve the action effect of grapple, which is knock down one enemy in your area. Now, Rick has to perform an action roll. To create this action dice pool, Rick adds action dice equal to the assigned characteristic of the chosen action, in this case, attack. White action dice are beneficial and provide possible successes that enhance actions. However, black stress dice are also added to the action pool to represent the mental fatigue suffered by the survivors. One stress die is added to the action pool for each stress the active survivor has suffered. Rick has yet to suffer any stress, so no worries there. Unfortunately, an additional stress die is added to the action pool if there is at least one walker in the active survivor's area. Next, it's time to roll our dice. It looks like we failed to roll any successes. If we had a focus token, we could discard it to turn the focus result into a success. And if we chose to exert, which entails discarding a survivor card from our hand or the top of our deck, we could turn the exert result to a success. Wait, let's go back to our born leader survivor card. This symbol is called an exertion bonus. It allows the active survivor to treat all exert results in the action pool as successes. So now, we have one success that we can discard from the results to trigger the grapple success result. Defeat one knockdown walker in your area. Before completing the rest of our action, let's take a look at the active event again. Since we did not fulfill the event card's text, nothing happens. If we had, we would have placed our event token on that card to indicate at least one survivor had completed this requirement. Each survivor may only resolve the active event once per turn. Back to the action. We must resolve the stress die. Each threat result on the stress die advances the threat track by one space. The threat track determines how many new walkers are placed at the end of the turn. Finally, the last step of the action lets us resolve unused focus results. The active survivor may gain one focus token for each unused focus result in the action pool. Now that we've cleared the way, let's use our maneuver to perform the move maneuver, letting us move up to two areas. At the end of our survivor's activation, we discard our survivor card and play continues with the survivor on our left, Daryl. Daryl is apparently feeling a bit more apprehensive than Rick, and he plays a cautious crossbow card on his turn. Since this card's approach does not match the group's approach, it is defiant, 
and Rick, as the leader, must suffer one stress due to Daryl's defiance. Gameplay continues with each survivor's activation, including playing one survivor card and up to one action and one maneuver per player. Let's skip ahead to the next phase of the turn. The event phase is when players see if at least one survivor's event token is on the active event. In this case, Glenn fulfilled the event, so his token is returned and the active event is discarded. If no survivor managed to fulfill the active event's conditions, then the leader would suffer one stress due to poor planning. The first thing that happens during the walker phase is that each walker in an area with a human figure performs an overrun. During an overrun, a survivor must exert one for each walker in his area. Each walker that performed an overrun is then knocked down. This walker moves one area towards the nearest survivor. Since there are two different equidistant paths to the nearest survivor, players refer to the top card on the map discard pile to determine the direction the walker moves. This walker is then knocked down. After activating all walkers, each knocked down walker stands back up to indicate they are now ready. The final step of the walker phase is the threat step, where new walkers are placed based on the threat track. Since the threat marker is on the second space of the threat track, two map cards will be drawn and the players will place one walker in each area drawn. During the objective phase, players resolve each effect of the current objective stage on the objective track. We resolve each effect listed on the current objective stage called Get Inside. Since the group needs to take refuge inside of a building, the objective stage effect requires us to resolve group tension, representing the survivor's scramble for safety. Group tension is resolved by reducing morale by one, unless each survivor can discard one trust. Since our group is short on trust, and not having any negates our survivor abilities, we'll save our trust and take the morale hit. The second effect listed on Get Inside is not yet relevant, as all survivors are not yet inside the building. So we end the turn by checking to see if a change in leadership is called for. The current leader must pass the leader token to his left if he is stressed, meaning he has suffered three stress. In our case, Rick is still keeping it together, so everyone will continue to follow our lead next turn. Now that we know the turn sequence, let's fast forward a bit in the scenario. All the survivors are now in the building and have placed a barricade per the objective stage requirements. The good news? If we can hold off until the end of the objective phase, we win. The bad news? The walkers are about to activate. Join the survivors in Walking Dead No Sanctuary on Kickstarter now.